Hey guys, Hermit here from Photo Insomnia. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a new app that I've been using and absolutely loving using it. It's called Plotograph, if you can see that here. The app lets you animate still images. So I'm going to open this app and I'm going to show you how I can animate an image. Now the criteria is you want to have an image that you can animate and do something with it. For example, this one here, let me play that for you. You see the clouds at the top there? It's something that we would expect to be moving if we were standing there and seeing, um, seeing the clouds fly across the sky. So you have to pick an image that you can animate. Another example would be uh, flying through the sky. So for example, here's a picture I've taken and you can see that it almost feels like we're flying above the clouds. Now, I'm going to take this image, which I've edited before, and I'm going to show you how I animate this one. So let's go and add. I'm going to go and pick this image. It adds it to the interface. The tools at the bottom, they let us animate and adjust and fine tune various different properties of this animation. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to start animating. So to animate, what we need to do is tap and drag on the screen to create the direction and point in that direction where we want the animation to go. So here, this is a picture taken in New Zealand of uh, this place called uh, Champagne Pool. So this is the steam rising up from the pool, which bubbles away. So to do that, I'm going to just drag, tap, drag an arrow like that. I want the steam moving in this direction. I want another one kind of going up. So I want it to funnel up, basically. This one going straight this way. Another one kind of going across. Another one coming from here, but a little shorter because I'm close to the edge. And I should start to animate the steam one going up because we want it to rise another one here rising up one in the middle and then i'm going to want them to kind of spread this way like so so i want them to funnel up now that i've done that let's play okay that's good but the whole image is moving so to ensure only the area that we want to move in the image should move. We have these anchor points. The anchors allow us to block off any points which we don't want to be moved by the animation. So I'm going to go along the edge here and I'm going to anchor these points so it doesn't start to move this area. Oops, not finished yet. And up here in the sky area or the tree area, let's start locking off the area that we do not want to move. And therefore, I'm blocking that away. Have one more up there, no? Okay. And on this side as well, I'm gonna go tap, tap, it's useful if you have one of those iPhone styluses. Um, I am using at the moment a Jot Pro and that lets me be a bit more precise in where I want to place an anchor for example and so on. Uh, with a finger you can do it. I did it before with some of those other animations that I showed you. Uh, but it requires a little bit of practice so you need to figure out with trial and error. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep blocking this off. Down here as well. Down here. Going up to the edge. And then I'm going to block off this area. Because we don't want that moving either. Here. I'm going to go back to animate. And I'm going to draw small arrows. I want small movement in this area as well. It's a kind of wind driving this steam this way. Okay, let's play that. And you see 
now it starts to look much more real. I'm noticing that it's maybe um, a bit too, uh, the, the anchors are a bit too far. So I can take the select tool and I can tap and move the anchors. Tap and move the anchors. So I'm moving these back a little bit. I think I went maybe too aggressive. So let's bring them along the edge here of this uh, rock, the orange edge. So it looks a little bit more realistic. I think it looks too artificial at this stage when the animation started. So let's move the anchors across. Okay, let's try that now. See much better there in that area. And we can see the movement up into the sky as well. The key thing to ensure that you get the realism you want is make sure you review close to the edge of the animation. So along the steam on the right where it's starting from doesn't appear or doesn't make it obvious that um, it's, uh, it's something that's animated. It all should almost feel real. I want to make sure that the animation looks as real as possible. So I'm going to scan along the edges of those anchor points. These anchor points here, scan along the edges of these anchor points to make sure that the animation looks as real as possible. The other thing we can adjust is the speed. So at the moment the default speed is 5. We can make it faster. Keep going up. Becomes, But it doesn't look too authentic or too real. right? It looks animated now. I normally like to go with the subtle and soft slow look which makes the loop of this animation continuous. You can't tell where it starts and where it finishes. So let's have a look now. Yes, that slow movement is is looking nice. Now next, before we share, what we can do is crop. You can crop in landscape, Facebook cover and portrait as well. But I would like to go and do a free crop. Try and give it a 16 by 9 ratio. I don't know why the app makers haven't provided those kind of ratios in the app by default. But anyway, it's a great app, so I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to drag this down. There we go. That's too much. Drag that here. Move it down there. And let's play. Look at that. That looks pretty cool. So then once I'm finished, I'm going to hit share. Now, if I want to text or email that to someone, it can be a small message, but I want to put it on social media. So it'll ask me what sort of length of this clip do you want? I generally go with a 10 second or 20 second clip, um, which kind of looks much nicer because you have more continuity and it's kind of keeps the viewer engaged, wondering what, what is going on? How did they do this? So let's do a 22 second clip. I can adjust the image size or the video size. I think I'm happy with the biggest one. So get the big, best quality. Save to camera roll. It's going to do its thing. And it's going to save that to the camera roll in a second. So I've done one before, but this is the one that we produce now. And that's playing as you can see and looks pretty cool i have to say anyone who sees it will think wow is this a video did you capture that on a video camera they won't know for sure what's going on but it will intrigue them and it will excite them and it will interest them so if you haven't got this app yet head over to the app store and download this app today uh, it doesn't cost much and it's a great deal of fun once you get started and you figure out how to use this app. Some of the others that I've shown you already are some of the things that I've played around with. Um, this was one of the first ones I did. So you can see that these anchor points are along the mountains, the edge of the mountains and the edge of the sky where the mountains meet the sky. And then I've got these small arrows going across, gently moving these clouds across, which makes it look quite real. And the speed, I've really slowed it down, 
0.1, the lowest it can go. Uh, this one was interesting. You've got to make sure that the illusion is real. If you're flying in a window seat, <clears throat> you'll notice that the clouds closer to you will move faster, of course, than the ones in the distance. So that's what I've tried to do here. The arrows at the bottom are long, which means they stretch and move the clouds a lot further. As I go up in the image, I have got the arrows being shorter and shorter because that creates that perspective of the movement, faster movement closer to you as the viewer and slower movement as it seems to be over in the distance. So that creates a more realistic illusion. If you had all of them moving at the same speed, you would not feel it's real, right? You will be able to tell that this is doctored. But here it's really hard to tell. All right, hope you liked that quick introduction into how to use a plotograph to basically animate your images into a video and a motion image. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, um, hit the subscribe button. The more support I get from you guys, the more it encourages me to make these videos to help you guys uh, and share what I've learned and what I've discovered. So until next time, this is Hermit from Photo Insomnia. Take care, bye-bye.